Sahaba Atomic Research Center has designed and developed Advanced Heavy Water Reactor AHWR to generate 300 megawatt electric power. AHWR is a 300 megawatt vertical pressure tube type boiling light water-cooled and heavy water moderated reactor. The main objective of the reactor is demonstration of large-scale utilization of thorium as fuel for generation of commercial nuclear power. This reactor will also demonstrate enhanced level of nuclear safety which is achieved by incorporating a number of passive safety features in the design. Nuclear energy is a clean and green energy solution but safety of the nuclear reactors has come to forefront during recent times especially in the wake of events of Fukushima plant in 2011. Active Engineering Safety Systems In the past, the reactor have relied on extensive use of active engineering safety systems for reactive control and protection. These systems use external power, actuated signal or operator action like valves, pumps, sensors, etc. Due to the active nature of the systems, reliability of active systems cannot be increased beyond threshold. Passive safety systems However, the safety of the reactor systems can be enhanced dramatically by use of inherent safety characteristics and passive safety systems in the design of reactor. Highest order of safety is provided by inherent safety characteristics in the design. These characteristics rely on choice of design concept and laws of nature with no reliance on engineering mechanisms or operator actions to prevent accidents. AHWR is provided with inherent safety characteristics like low power density, proper selection of materials of fuel and clad, low excess reactivity, double containment and negative void coefficient of reactivity. Passive safety systems operate based on natural physical laws such as gravity, buoyancy, stored energy, etc. They do not require external source of energy or operator actuation. The film highlights the passive system used in AHWR. The core heat removal of AHWR under normal operation is achieved by using natural circulation of main heat transport coolant. The light water coolant picks up the fission heat generated in the reactor core and is converted to two-phase mixture of steam and water. Due to buoyancy, this coolant flows to steam drums. The steam is separated from this mixture using gravity separation in the steam drums. The steam drives the turbines to generate electricity. The natural circulation of coolant has avoided requirement of pump for circulation of coolant and thereby eliminated many postulated initiating events due to non-availability of pumps or power supply. Safe shutdown of the reactor is important safety function which must be ensured to avoid accidents. AHWR is equipped with two separate independent and diverse shutdown systems called as shutdown system STS-1 and shutdown system STS-2. In the shutdown system 1, the shutoff rods containing neutron poison are dropped by gravity in the calendria to shut down the reactor. This is achieved by de-energizing the electromagnetic clutch holding the shutoff rods. This system is fail-safe as loss of power will lead to shutdown of the reactor. In shutdown system 2, liquid neutron poison is injected in the calendria to shut down the reactor. This is achieved by opening of valve between poison tank and pressurized gas tank. Stored energy of gas is used for dry poison, the moderator. The passive poison injection system, PPIS, is an additional system in AHWR to fulfill the shutdown function during a very low probability event of failure of wired shutdown systems, for example, due to insider threat. Under such scenario, the rise in power of reactor results in increase in pressure of primary coolant. This increased pressure actuates a passive valve which in turn injects poison in the moderator to shut down reactor to safe state. 
during shutdown condition of the reactor and non availability of the main steam condenser the decay heat of the core can be removed by passive means using shutdown cooling system by isolation condensers this system diverts steam flow from steam drum to isolation condenser by operation of passive valve this passive valve actuates automatically due to increase in the pressure of the system the eight isolation condensers ic which are submerged in each compartment of pool of water called gravity driven water pool gdwp will dissipate the heat to the gdwp the decay heat removal is done through natural circulation this system is completely passive and does not require any external power source or any operator action Emergency core cooling system ECCS is one of the safety systems provided to mitigate the consequences of loss of coolant accident loca in the event of a break in pressure boundary of the main heat transport system MHTS the ECCS is designed to provide sufficient coolant to the core to ensure adequate core reactor cooling during all phases of the accident thereby avoiding any significant fuel failure and release of activity beyond prescribed limits to the environment ECCS in AHWR has 3 phases out of which first two are passive the first phase is high pressure injection which provides passive injection of large amount of cold water directly into the core during loca from pressurized accumulators the system uses stored energy of pressurized nitrogen gas for injection of water into the core directly. The next phase of ECCS is low pressure injection LPI from GDWP. Subsequently, with drop in pressure of MHT system, this system injects the coolant into the core by gravity from GDWP, which lasts for three days. One important feature provided in AHWR is negative void coefficient of reactivity. In case of unwarranted power excursion which results in formation of void in coolant, this feature provides negative reactivity feedback resulting in reduction of power. AHWR is also equipped with novel passive safety system named Passive Auto Depressurization System PADS. Wherever depressurization of MHT system is required, for example, during small break loca, this system depressurizes the MHT system. In case of small break loca, passive pulse generator PPG senses the drop in level of steam drum and actuates the auto depressurization passive valve ADPV. Opening of the valve actuates the cooling by isolation condenser to bring down the pressure faster. In event of loca, the containment pressure may rise due to energy released in the containment in form of air stream mixture. To limit this pressure, rise and remove heat, two passive systems are provided acting in short term and long term. Vent shafts submerged in GDWP are provided between enthalpy V1 volume and enthalpy V2 volume. In the initial period of loca, the steam air mixture from V1 volume enters the GDWP through the vent shafts where steam condenses. This vapor suppression system works passively. In the long term, the passive containment cooling system is provided to remove energy released into the containment following loca through passive external condensers which comprises cooling tubes connected to GDWP. The containment steam condenses on the outer surface of the tubes and water from the GDWP circulates through these tubes by natural circulation. Normal containment is ventilated through an intake and an exhaust ventilation system. However, in the event of accidents like loca or main steam line break, the containment needs to be isolated from the environment to eliminate release of radioactivity. This is achieved through passive containment isolation system which forms a water seal in the vent line using differential pressure of environment and containment. During prolonged station blackout conditions like Fukushima, passive system is provided for cooling of the moderator contained in Calandria vessel of the reactor. This system consists of heat exchangers capable of removing decay heat by natural circulation. 
two independent natural circulation loops are formed between heated moderator and elevated heat exchanger and between heat exchanger and GDWP. Similarly, passive end shield cooling system is also designed for cooling water of the end shields during prolonged station blackout. Together, these systems can assure grace period of 7 days for AHWR. For venting the containment after 10 days, a containment filtered vent system CFVS has been incorporated in the reactor design. CFVS prevents overpressurization of the containment and maintains the integrity of the containment. It also retains more than 99% of released radionuclides, if any, through a scrubbing system. To deal with extremely unlikely event of severe accident involving meltdown of core, a core catcher is designed as part of abundant caution. In case of such accident, the molten core materials, often called as corium, can fall below the core. The core catcher provides cooling to the corium mass by passive means and also avoids progression of accident. In case of severe accidents, hydrogen may get generated in containment. As higher hydrogen concentration is dangerous, several passive autocatalytic recombiner PARC devices are installed in the containment of AHWR. These devices limit the hydrogen concentration inside containment below the flammability limit by controlled combustion of hydrogen using catalysts. Passive Union System Pause in certain accidental conditions, GDWP water may fall in low enthalpy V2 volume instead of high enthalpy V1 volume, preventing core submergence and cooling. Passive union system pause, is designed to create union of these volumes and allow water to pass from V2 to V1 volumes. With helps of rupture disc and check-in valves, the union is made possible by passive means during GDWP failure while maintaining isolation during normal operation of reactor. Extensive experimental validation program is carried out by Baba Atomic Research Center for establishing working and reliability of passive systems. It is established through studies that passive system is fully independent of the operator action or any active signals considerably improve safety of the nuclear power plants. The use of inherent and passive safety approaches can make the new nuclear power systems considerably simpler and safer.